Uh, and in this case, uh, you, you would have to make sure that your tanks are used in combined arms with mechanized infantry, artillery, uh, all of that is synchronized with dismounted uh, forces, uh, et cetera. So there is no silver bullet in this case, but I do think the M1 tank, when it's delivered and it reaches its operational capability, that it'll be very effective on the battlefield. By their solidarity and their commitment to all its sovereign skies and to help you. As we stand here today, the Ukrainian military continues to perform very well. Intense fighting in and around Bakhmut continues and has for several months. Russia is expending significant manpower for very little gain. Russia is intensifying indiscriminate shelling in Advika and other cities and urban areas. And Russia continues to pay severely for its war of choice. Unlike Ukrainian forces who are highly motivated to fight for their country, to fight for their freedom, their democracy, and their way of life, the Russian lack in leadership, they lack will, the morale is poor, and the discipline is eroding. Countries of Europe are really the globe, uh, and it wouldn't be happening without Secretary Austin's leadership. Uh, is critical to the capability of the Ukrainian military to defend itself. We've also expedited our M1 Abrams timelines to supply Ukraine with more armored capability in the coming months. And the M1s that the Ukrainians will use for training will arrive here in Germany in the next few weeks. And all of this is huge progress. Systems including Germany and the Netherlands. Right now, what, uh, what we all believe is what Ukraine needs most urgently is ground-based air defense capability. That is what has enabled them to prevent the Russian air forces from having a meaning, meaningful impact in this fight. Very value whatsoever. So we're helping Ukraine defend its... So uh, we, we continue to engage our partners and, uh, and, and allies and, and emphasize that we need to do everything we can to ensure that Ukraine has adequate air defense, ground-based air defense capability. And I have to applaud uh, uh, the work that our partners are doing. Uh, where possible, they're stepping up to the plate. Uh, I believe that, that we can still do more, and I'm asking them to do more, and I believe that they will respond. So. I'll turn it over to the chairman. That's the most important critical military task right now. That was the theme of this entire day, uh, was air defense, air defense, air defense, to make sure that uh, Ukraine can defend its airspace. Uh, in terms of the aircraft themselves, there's a long lead time for, uh, uh, for training of pilots, etc., and the Russians have a significant amount of air power. Uh, and to take the Ukrainian Air Force from where it is today and to build it up to match the Russian Air Force, that's a significant level of effort by lots of countries. On Ukraine's chances of retaking much territory in this spring counteroffensive. Uh, and for operation security purposes, as you would guess, I, I, I won't specify, you know, where those troops uh, uh, move to. And, uh, and, but, uh, but our focus is to make sure that we continue to do prudent planning and that we create uh, and maintain as many options for uh, our president as possible. Is here today as a new NATO ally. So we've enjoyed uh, uh, support from the American people uh, throughout. Uh, I, am, I am very hopeful that we'll continue to see that same level of support. Uh, and, uh, and again, uh, this is not just important to the Ukrainian people. It's important to the world. This is about the rules-based international order. This is about, uh, you know, a, a bully not having the, the ability to trample his, uh, his smaller neighbor at will. And this is about protecting or uh, providing the opportunity for a country to protect its sovereign rights. So. In the face of Russia's aggression and its attack. On the